The IMF in Kenya recently signed a memorandum of understanding that's in order for Kenya to qualify for their next loan tranche. That's around $110 million. Now, Kenya's recent cash injection brings the total disbursements under the economic enhancement package to around $530 million. Joining us now for more on uh, the agreement, the latest agreement, and of course the outlook uh, with regards to the IMF's view on the Kenyan economy, Ragnar Goodmanson. Repres uh, resident representative at the IMF joining us from our Nairobi studios. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Ragnar. So let's just uh, take, get your views right now. When it comes to that agreement with the Kenyan government, uh, could you run us through uh, if there are any changes with regards to, uh, to the IMF's position on, on the way the Kenyan economy is being managed right now? Okay, well, for, first of all, good afternoon. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, yes, the executive board of the IMF met last week to approve the completion of the fourth review under the ECF supported program. And uh, this will lead to a disbursement, as you mentioned, of about 110 million US dollars. Uh, when the fourth review came to the board, uh, the authorities had met their targets on uh, the fiscal primary deficit, also on the accumulation of international reserves and the net domestic assets of the central bank. So performance under the program has been satisfactory. Also, we've seen that there has been considerable progress over the last year in terms of uh, strengthening macroeconomic stability, notably with a reduction in inflation, which has come down to about 5%. So there's been a clear improvement in uh, monetary conditions. Also, the authorities have adhered uh, to their targets on the fiscal side, demonstrating fiscal discipline in a very challenging environment last year. Uh, looking forward, we think that economic activity is on the rebound and we should see GDP growth of about 5.2% in 2012 and 2013. And this has been supported by favorable weather conditions and macroeconomic stability. Moreover, uh, with the improvement in inflation expectations, if these are sustained, we can expect some uh, loosening of monetary policy which in turn uh, will make access to credit uh, cheaper, easier, and will uh, contribute to stimulate economic growth. Yep. So, of course, of sorry, Ragnar, if we just uh, dwell on that point for some time now, because, of course, we know the history uh, when it comes to monetary policy perhaps being uh, behind the curve last year. You, do you feel right now that you're comfortable uh, w with kind of the rates of cuts we have seen? Um, and when we talk about scope for more accommodative policy, uh, what in fact does that mean? I mean, how, how much further uh, could, could uh, interest rates go down by? I think you know, that, that really depends on the evolution of inflation. If we see that inflationary pressures remain low and that inflation expectations are indeed low in the market, there could be some room for additional uh, monetary policy easing. We're quite comfortable with uh, the most recent decisions of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank. Uh, they definitely went in, in the right direction and we are operating in really a benign environment. But, uh, as one of your uh, speakers mentioned just before, we're not out of the woods yet. We have to pay close attention to the evolution of international food and oil prices because these will have a bearing on inflation. So, um, you know, the, the stance right now is that the conditions are appropriate for some uh, loosening of monetary policy, but that will really depend on a close monitoring of inflation and inflation expectations. If we look at uh, the evolution of credit in the economy, we can see that it's come down significantly from highs of about 37% year on year at the end of 2011 to levels that are closer to 10% at present. So both in terms of price uh, dynamics and also the evolution of credit, uh, to the private sector, we believe that if these trends are sustained, there would be some room for easing of monetary policy. When it comes to uh, the current account deficit, of course, when you're talking about oil, uh, it's that imported, you know, nature uh, of oil because the country imports, you know, so much oil um, to, to keep it going, and that, of course, has a huge impact on that current account deficit. Uh, what what is your outlook for that, and what is your position now when it comes to central bank reserves to keep funding that deficit? I think you're absolutely right to point out that uh, Kenya is uh, dependent on oil imports 
And of course, this is what contributed to some of the tensions we witnessed last year when there was a drought in the country. And this contributed to a higher oil import bill for thermal power uh, generation. In 2011, the oil import bill represented about 30% of total imports. So this is really a key factor uh, that affects the current account uh, deficit here in Kenya. What we've seen in 2012 is that uh, there has been a return to normal weather conditions, the rainfalls have been good, and this means that both agricultural production has been enhanced and also there is less of a need for expensive uh, oil imports for thermal uh, power generation. This means that we expect the current account deficit uh, to come down in uh, the current budget year. The current account deficit for the 2011-12 budget year was at about 9.2% of GDP. We think that for the 2012-13 uh, budget year, it will come down to about 8% of GDP. In addition to that, we've seen uh, that the, bank, the central bank's uh, monetary policy has allowed for an accumulation of international reserves beyond projected levels. So there also we see positive trends.